Welcome back to the Chelsea Save. Welcome to a new season here in the Chelsea Save. Season 3 begins today. And of course, we were successful in Season 2. Spoilers incoming. In winning the Premier League and the FA Cup. Meaning we will be in the Champions League this season. And that is the priority this year, rather understandably. We do, however, have the Community Shield against Manchester City to play on the way into this new season after winning both competitions uh, last year. Obviously, you then have to play someone that wasn't the winner of the FA Cup or the Premier League. We played the runner-up in the Premier League, which was Manchester City uh, last year. So probably not going to win the Community Shield because City were the team that beat me in the league. City were the team that knocked me out of the Carabao Cup and ensured we didn't win the treble. And I'm hoping to avoid them in every further cup competition this season. Thank you as ever to those that continue to show your support in the comments section. I appreciate it very much indeed. Thank you for your continued effort and I will be asking for a lot of, a lot of comments in today's episode as well with regards to new signings for the club. The 11 is as you see it there, but we have a bit more information now than we did at the end of season two when we discussed potential changes to this team. So it is the aim to Definitely 100% definitively, without any question, sign a new starting world-class centre-back. I would like a high-rated centre-back, please. And one of Badi Ashile and Di Sarsi will leave. I'm selling Chaloba. He's going. Di Sarsi and Badi Ashile are both peaked. So they will only each grow by one more this season. So, Badi Shile at 24 years of age, Di Sassi at 27. It's your decision as to which gets sold. Because they're both signed at relatively the same time in real life, within six months or so. The other decision that we were contemplating was, does Conor Gallagher go? We sign someone world-class for centre mid as well, and Caicedo drops to the bench. Now, I wasn't sure whether Caicedo was going to grow well this year and catch up with people like Enzo Fernandez, maybe even as high as Nkunku, unlikely but we weren't sure both Caicedo and Gallagher have peaked so they will only grow by a maximum of one this season so Caicedo's not going to get any higher than 86, Gallagher's not going to get any higher than 83 so do I sign another centre mid as well and drop Caicedo to the bench and have Caicedo and Joel Polina as my backup centre mids? Leslie Ugachukwu has also peaked at 80 and Cassidy's peaked at 74. Colwell has not. He's open to growing. Lavia is open to growing, but he's so far down the pecking order. I'm just going to loan him out again. Everybody you see here is going to get loaned again or sold in the case of Nico Jackson, who at 80 through rated is higher rated and valued than Broya, but we know how good Broya is and there's no way Nico Jackson gets into my team ahead of Broya, so he goes. And Nkunku could play up top anyway. I am contemplating maybe, depending on how much money we've got left, signing a new better backup for Nkunku at Cam. But at the moment, we rotate Gonsalves in there and then Noni Madueke or Mikhailo Mudrik play there, both of which have not peaked and have the capability to grow yet further this season. So that's a very last minute, potentially, if there's some money left. Speaking of the money, because you guys want to know how much money I've got to spend. A lot, a lot, a lot. 350 million, basically. Plus, of course, the sale of Chaloba. Plus the sale of uh, Badi Ushile, who's currently transfer listed, but that's at his request, of course. Uh, I still can't take him off, I don't think. Nope. Still got his transfer request in despite playing multiple games last year. And Nico Jackson is valued at 36. So I probably have about four, 400 million by the time I'm done. Because Trevor Chaloba is going to go. I'll just accept that. Isn't it? We've, got, we've got more money than God at the moment. So it doesn't matter right now making sure I get that extra couple. With regards to players on my shortlist currently for that centre-back role, I'll show you here. I've got Maxence Lacroix, although I do need a scout report. Gonzalo Inacio, although I do need a scout report. Then... Konate, Van Dijk, Christian Romero, Antonio Silva's at Real Madrid. But I've got a scout report. He's, um, he's not been there that long either, I don't think. Simicam, I'm getting a scout report on. Then there's Laporte, 
Paul Torres, Schlotterbeck, De Ligt, Tamori, Bastoni, Militao, who's moved actually to go to Napoli. So I'd be intrigued in maybe getting Militao in. Uh, Ruben Diaz is on the list because he's one of the highest centre-backs, but I don't think City would let me have him in real life. I think that's probably a bit too far outside the realms of possibility. Araujo, Kim Min Jae, Bremer, Botman, Marquinhos. <gasps> Insert potentially some more as per your comments, but they are who I am looking at at the moment. So we'll push forward. We'll see if we can get deals done. Reese James has had some interest in him from uh, Manchester City and now Real Madrid, but rather obviously he's not going anywhere. I won't accept any bids for Barry Ashile yet. Yet? I don't know why I said yet rather than yet. I won't accept any bids for Badia Shile yet because obviously we're wanting to have you guys decide between the two of them which goes, Di Sassi or Badia Shile, but evidently there is interest in both of them, so I'm happy with that. Andre Santos can go on. I'm not about maximising any of that. I was only going to loan him and he's going to add some more money to the kitty anyway. So which one of those two gets sold? It's down to you. You have the decision. It is in your hands, comment section. We'll push as far as we can. I do have the opportunity to loan some more. To loan some more. To sign another staff member, potentially. Nico Jackson swap deal. Pierre Kalulu. Thank you, really want Kalulu. Uh, I'll... I'll negotiate that. Maybe I can maximise this... Uh, this deal. I, I, Tamori's going to be too highly valued to ask for a straight swap. So... I'm basically just going to try and get some money for Nico Jackson. 50 million is what I'll ask for. Now they'll offer me Pulisic. I don't want Pulisic back. Christ's sake. How about 45 million? Will you pay that? They'll pay 45. Well, that basically is 400 million in the kitty after the Santos and... Uh, what's his face? Chaloba deals go through as well. So, £400 million available to spend. My God, it'd be good to see Lavia play in the Premier League as well, actually, on loan, because then I could actually keep track of what he does. More bids, is it? Yes, Fulham have offered me £27 million plus Calvin Bassey. I'm not going to sell Nico Jackson to the Premier League, I don't think. I don't think, unless it's an obvious, like, they're going to give me way more money. Trevor Tulova's going! Bye, Trevor! Appreciate your support, appreciate your service, but off to Germany, to Frankfurt. He will leave us for nearly £18 million. It's not a mad deal. It's an A-rated deal, though. And Andre Santos has gone as well. So he leaves to go to Juventus. That's a D, apparently. Oh, dear. Never mind. I, I might hire a new scout. I don't really know as I need to hire a new scout. Not scout. Coach. At the moment... It's not really something that decides how good this team is. In lower league saves, certainly at Cambridge, maybe at Leeds, maybe at some of the others, uh, we might need to uh, utilise the coaches a bit more to maximise our potential growth. But here at Chelsea, it's just not really a factor, unfortunately. Uh, that's Nico Jackson off. Bye, Felicia. He's going to leave as well. Is that an A deal? 45 million to AC Milan? It's probably a pretty good deal. Is it A? Oh. Oh. No. C. 60? They turned down 50. So how do you expect me to have gotten 60? I have absolutely no idea whatsoever. That is Slanina, I think, on his way. Is that Slanina? It is. Bye. Alone mid to Wolves for 12 months. We'll see some growth from some of the youngsters. We won't see growth from most. Slinian and gone. Chukwa Mecca loan bid. Washington now with a loan offer. I'm quite happy for him to go to West Ham. That's not a problem. Lavi has agreed a deal to go there. Fafana, we've got a deal for you. Sassuolo have agreed a deal there. To be honest, by the time I get your feedback, those bids for uh, Badi Ushili and Disassi will have expired, I would imagine. So I'm going to try and get towards the uh, community seal today and play that. We have... Ooh, 10 million. I, I mean, I'll take that as well. So I we have... As per your request, up to the difficulty to legendary for this season. The last time I played City on World Class, I lost. So how that's going to go this season on legendary, I really don't know. West Ham have asked to loan Cole Palmer. I'll accept that. Cole Palmer is peaked. Actually, that's probably something the YouTube video should be aware of. 
<laughs> Cole Palmer, I'll probably even leave that in. Cole Palmer has left us on loan, obviously, but still, he had peaked at 73. So, if we're gonna if we're gonna potentially be signing someone else to come in in that position, then it just makes sense, doesn't it? To uh, to let him go. I'd rather no, I'd rather he went to West Ham because then I can just keep track of all of his stats to see how many Premier League games he's playing. Ronnie Thomas alone bid. Uh, Stade de Reims we can do. He's already negotiating, or we're already negotiating with Wolves. Palmer and Thomas, right? Lacroix, eighty. Ugh, no. Antonio Silva's only eighty-two. He's not grown so much yet. No, and then. Inacio, 82. No, we're not looking for players at that level. We're looking for the best of the best. It's time to probably get my backside handed to me by a very, very strong Manchester City. Uh, any new signings in there? Not that we notice at the moment. Teo Hernandez was already there. Leroy Zane was already there as well. They love James McAtee. They just adore him. Uh, I couldn't beat them on world class. Now we're playing on legendary. This might be a mauling. I hope to be able to bring home another piece of silverware. But, oof. Oof, I'm not confident. I, I don't really know what to expect here. Obviously, like we've said, on world class, I struggled against Manchester City on most occasions. The main issue for me is defending not great really not great but hopefully I mean to be honest it's not really the the, mo the most obvious of teams to test yourself against to really find out whether you're at the right level or not because quite frankly City are a joke at times they're a joke on world class let alone legendary McAtee out wide to Bernardo Silva. We got a toe in. We got two toes in. It wasn't enough. Still they press. Rodri, McAtee. Oh, it's going to open up for him. And he's buried it. Right. Welcome to Legendary. James McAtee makes it Manchester City 1. Chelsea nil in the 10th minute. Defence did seem to just kind of part there, which was half on me, I think, there by selecting the wrong man and then pulling him out of the way. I wanted to select to one centre-back. Thought I had him. I uh, thought I was switching to Badi Ushile. I wasn't. I was switching to Fafana and just kind of ran off. <laughs> By all means, take a shot, pal. Right, okay. Well, the only way is up. So up we shall hopefully go. It's Rodri. Okay. Rodri still. Rodri still. Now to Silva. Okay. Okay. Well, apparently, they're untackleable on Legendary. I don't know whether it's still me being rubbish, but I feel like I timed tackles well enough there and positioned myself well enough, and he just seemed to just skirt around me. Hmm. 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 I bet you see this there, and, uh, and I stepped in with... Was it Chilwell? And he didn't actually do a tackling anyway, so he just kind of stood next to it. Hmm. Hmm, and now the sun's come back out here and it's not as dark as it was. Hmm, oh, this is all very suspect right now. I think it it might be just, oh, might be a card for Phil Foden is what it might be. And that card colour is going to be red. Game changed in the 20th minute. It's a glorified friendly, Philip. What are you diving in two-footed down the calf for? And now it's cloudy again. Every time... We go to a cutscene and come back. The weather changes. The clouds seem to be intertwined with the cutscenes. And Kunku into Enzo. Tammy's there through the gap. Tammy's found. He spun well. Tammy Abraham. Edison makes the save. Well, we're already slightly better going forward. I could be better at the back. That'd be lovely. It might just be Manchester City. It might just be me being rubbish. Edison's a bit good, though. But Edison was a bit good anyway. Rhys James will try again. Tammy will try again, and I still won't score. Sterling's got the support. Nkunku, you can have it this time, pal. I've got nowhere to go. Enzo's arrived. Enzo and Nkunku again. Ah! Where to turn? Raheem! No, Teo Hernandez is in the way. Okay, well, I'm getting better offensively. Oh, my God, he's quick. But defensively, I think I'm still just rubbish. 
I might, I might still just be rubbish. <laughs> oh, come on. I tackled him and he's immediately just warped back to him. Well in, Benoit. That is Chile puts in a good block. Is there to be a third Manchester City goal before half-time? Again, City aren't really the side to test yourself against as to whether you're on the right difficulty or not, are they really? Because these are the sort of games that you could lose on most difficulties. And the season starts with Manchester United and Arsenal as my first two games as well, which still isn't really the best of gauges. Bernardo Silva, Rodri. It's wide, thankfully. Fire the old. Through the gap to De Bruyne. Nicely to Rodri. It's Rodri still. Here's Kyle Walker. Erling. Oh. They're just devastating, aren't they? I was expecting a shot from Erling, so I committed to a block. Couldn't get there. And then Bernardo Silva's just on hands to be like, I'll score instead then. Swing. If it's on target, it goes in, is my experience so far on Legendary. But again, we'll give it we'll give it more than just one game's one game's testing. We'll do oh god, we'll do the end of the transfer window at least on Legendary and just see what happens, but <laughs> I think it might be slider time on world class because, or maybe just less accurate shots from the AI. Because at the moment, it feels like if it's on target, it's in and goalkeepers are actually pointless. Because Diogo Silva, Diogo Silva, Diogo Carlos, Diogo Costa! Come on, Chez, for Christ's sake. Diogo Costa is infinitely better than Robert Sanchez was at the beginning of season one. But still, goalkeepers, for me, feel like they're pretty useless, at least. On half a game's experience. In fact, the AI defenders just don't mark at all. You're constantly just chasing someone. You're switching to a player and then you're chasing space. Because there's never someone that's actually within immediate touching distance of the man in possession. But a lot of the time... Oh my god, a shot that was on target that didn't go in. A lot of the time, you've not got... Oh... The lighting is pissing me off. A lot of the time, you, by the time you switch to that person, you don't actually have enough time to get to them to block the shot. Oh God, Diogo. Oh, my God, Diogo. Thank you. The first one was rubbish. The second one was at least half decent. Yeah, uh, hopefully against lesser sides will be better. But this is an experience again on Legendary. <laughs> it's, it's just so different. It's just so... Oh, It's just un... It's just, it feels unplayable at times. I don't get it. World class is a challenge, but at times slightly too easy. But legendary, let alone ultimate, this feels practically impossible. Pedro, in there to Enzo. Tammy's there. Nice touch. And Kunku, well, I tried it. Fadio got in the way. Now we'll find Kunku. Then we'll look for Sterling. Sterling in the box. It's just no room. It might just be because it's City. And Kunku deflected and in. Yay! If it weren't for the deflection, it probably wouldn't have got in. But I'll take it. It's 4-1 here against the 10 men. Yeah. Well, it's a start. Half the time it's my defending. Half the time it's just the AI just being unplayable when it comes to conceding goals. They're just, at times, quite simply, unplayable. What am I even supposed to do there? I've got like a five yard head start. I start sprinting. I know Kyle Walker's quick, but he's not five yard head start, roll all the way around Chilwell and get to the ball five yards ahead of him fast compared to an upgraded Ben Chilwell. I asked for a first time pass, please. Why did you not kick it? Ronaldo Silva. Brilliant. Sané. Bloody hell. Legendary just feels like bullshit. Just feels like straight up bollocks. Fadio. Just can't get near him. I can't get... Um, how? How are these tackles not connecting? I don't understand. Ake on for Walker. Delivery in. Enzo flicks. Rodri's header. Oh my god, Diogo Costa lunges away to tip it around the corner. Is that really not something you can hold on to? Silver with a delivery again. James and Badio Sile both up. De Bruyne brings that down. 
Out to Bernardo. All right, you take the piss now. Oh, come on! Legendary's just AIDS. It's just unfathomably rubbish in terms of the quality of the gameplay. That's just... That's just BS. It's genuinely just BS. Enzo gets it down, runs straight into him. Oh, takes a deflection as well. Oh, this is just bollocks. <laughs> if it was just difficult, then I'd understand it. And I'd be like, okay, no, it's fine. If it's difficult and it's a challenge, then I'm up for the challenge. But this isn't difficult to the point of it being challenged or being a challenge. It's difficult to the point of you feel like there's nothing you can do that would actually make a difference. It might just be because it's City, it might just be because they're gay compressing, it might just be because they're the world's best players, but I feel like there's not I feel like there's nothing I can do in some circumstances. I will play the next episode on Legendary 2. We will play Manchester United, we will play Arsenal, we will play Brentford on Legendary and see how it is. But if it's still like that, then I will probably spend some time playing the game outside of recording an episode to try and test gameplay levels and sliders to figure out what the hell to do. Because world class with a squad this good is going to be too easy. But legendary is just bullshit. So it's a tough one. I think MGH is using some sliders. I've been told that MGH is using some sliders that he enjoys. So I might, I might reach out to Matt and see what he uses. And I could try the sliders we used last year and see if they work with this year's gameplay engine and changes to the gameplay because we found that they were decent. At the moment I have bids for Badi Asile and bids for DSRC. So you're deciding on who goes and who stays out of those two. And then help me decide on the Conor Gallagher situation. Do I sell Gallagher and sign someone that's just... And then drop Kaiseido. And then, depending on what money we've got left, we'll make a decision probably in January about what to do with Nkunku. With, with Nkunku's backup. But for the time being... Whew, it's an experience, but we've got 400 million to spend and maybe it's just Manchester City things. Who knows? But I have a funny feeling it might just be bullshit FC24 legendary and ultimate difficulty things. But we'll wait and see. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.